Hi guys, this is Mr. V and welcome to the Apes Review video. This is topic 1.3, aquatic biomes. So in the aquatic ecosystems, one of the things you have to understand is a biome is kind of based on land, so that's kind of not a great name, but that's still okay. Um, one of the things that is the main factor probably in all of aquatic ecosystems or biomes is salinity, right? Salinity is the amount of salt content. So whether you have high amounts of salt and you're hypersaline, like a place like the Dead Sea, or whether you're a freshwater area that has no salt, that plays a big role. Now, again, that's the main role in identifying what type of ecosystem you have, but then there's other ones as well. Again, some bodies of water may not have certain depth or turbidity, which is the cloudiness of the water. That's this word right here. Okay, so that's important to remember. Um, nutrients as well, which we'll talk about in other videos about nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, and then, of course, temperature is a big one as well, because if the water is too cold or too hot, that may be outside of the range of tolerance of some species. So the first ones we're going to start with are going to be freshwater biomes. Those freshwater biomes generally are going to be, for humans, uh, a big source of drinking water. Okay? Uh, a good portion of uh, people in the United States use freshwater biomes as a drinking water source. Those would be things like streams, rivers, also ponds and lakes. Okay? Um, and these can be characterized by the fact that they're either moving or non-moving. So a stream and a river would be a moving bottle of wa body of water. Um, and then a um, uh, pond or a lake would be a body of water that's not moving. Okay? So those would be either lentic or lotic bodies of water. Okay. Now, for marine biomes, the thing that's going to, again, uh, characterize them is the fact that they are going to be... Uh, with some level of salt. Now, some may have less salt, right? So that would be like an estuary or a marshland. Okay, and then again, you may have open ocean ones right here. These are going to have more salt, okay? Uh, which is typical. Now, um, the thing about them is they are responsible for taking in uh, a large chunk of CO2 from the atmosphere and providing us with about 40 to 60 percent of the oxygen we breathe. That's because of the photosynthesis that occurs in these biomes. And one of the things I want you to remember is think about the depth profile. Okay, So the idea is that if you've got you know, a uh, body of water and you're looking at it right here, some bodies of water may be very short. Okay, Others may be very deep and go all the way down to the bottom here. Okay, But light only penetrates in certain levels right here. So we're going to talk about that in a later video. Uh, but it matters and that's the important thing because all of that uh, oxygen and CO2 that's produced to us that is produced in that upper layer where the light does reach. So we'll be talking about that again in another video as well. Um, but that's how marine biomes produce all of that um, uh, oxygen and take up that CO2 that we need. Okay. Now, one of the things that's another important part of marine biomes is the fact that um, they tend to, to provide us with a lot of uh, resources. Okay? Um, so they're abundant, of course, in non-mineral sources, which would be like your fish, things like that. Um, but they're also going to be uh, big resources depending on salinity, the depth, turbidity, as I mentioned. Okay, turbidity is that clarity of water, right? So if the water is super clear, it may not have as much nutrients, which means it's not going to have a lot of uh, life available, um, especially the algae that's important. So then you have your nutrient availability of your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, okay? Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, having temperature, which is very, very related to light and depth. If you don't have these two um, kind of underlined there, that's going to be a big role, or that's going to play a big role in the temperature of your body of water. Okay. So this is a brief overview of these marine ecosystems. You will hear a lot about them in future videos when it comes to uh, uh, biomes and or when it comes to um, pro productivity and stuff like that. So that's going to be a very big relation to the biomes. So. And here's a couple of other resources um, having to do with marine and freshwater biomes. So hopefully that was uh, helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.